Hi FlossTube, my name is Danielle and this is my channel about cross stitch and sometimes other crafty things but not usually. <laughs> and um, so today I'm filming my end of November wrap up and I don't know about y'all but this month flew by. <laughs> like I blinked and here we are. It's November 30th. I don't I don't know how we got here. Um, so I did not have as productive of a month as I had hoped to for a couple reasons. I don't know if any of y'all are Animal Crossing players, but if you are, you'll probably, that's all I had to say was Animal Crossing, right? Um, <laughs> they dropped a really big update at the beginning of November and it kind of consumed my soul for a couple weeks. So I spent quite a bit of time on Animal Crossing and then when I got back to stitching, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna meet my first goal of the month. Um, so I was like, we'll just see if I can do it by the end of the month. Spoiler alert, that didn't happen either. <laughs> but um, I wanted to film this just like a couple days early because I think I want to do Flossmas, I do. I, I still feel like I'm not sure I can commit to like a daily record and and upload because that's the part that I suck at is like editing and uploading the videos but I still really want to do it so I wanted to have this video out before December 1st because if I do floss tube December 1st or if I do floss mess then December 1st is going to be when those uploads start so um Let's just talk about the month a little bit first. Oh, oh, and actually before I talk about the month, I want to start out by talking about something I was gonna talk about in my last video, but my last video went for an hour and a half. Mm. So I was like, let's save it and we'll do it at the beginning of the video instead of an end. So I, one of my favorite floss tubers is Chris Cross Stitch. Uh, I just like, he has such a, you know, positive good energy about him he seems just like a really you know kind soul so i really enjoy his videos and he as i'm sure you probably know because you're all probably following him and if you're not go do that now <laughs> um he does a thing on his channel where he every comment on his video is a penny donation to a charity and it was a really touching story inspired by one of his viewers and it really, really touched me. And so I've made sure, cause I can be really bad about um, comment engagement. Like I love the videos and I love watching them, but I can just be really bad about following through with a comment or a like or anything like that. So it's really inspired me to make sure I leave a comment on every video that I watch of his because I know that what he's doing. So I found myself in a situation, maybe just like a couple months after he started doing that or a month or so after he started doing that with a friend of mine who I will spare you the details because they're pretty horrific. But a friend of mine adopted two kittens from a rescue organization and the kittens had feline distemper and the long story short is that the rescue organization claimed that they didn't have the money to get the kittens emergency care and because they didn't have the money to go to an emergency care vet they had to wait to get them in to see a normal vet, which of course, you know, during COVID, it's hard to get into anything, you know, because of protocols and there's less staff and they're, you know, it's just hard. And one of the kittens did get to go to the vet and was able to be euthanized humanely. The other kitten did not make it to the vet and died before getting there and I just found myself uh, being super 
upset at the whole thing because I just felt like, you know, when you're in rescue work, you know, getting emergency care like that sometimes needs to happen. And if you don't have the funds to provide emergency care, then you need to not take in animals. Like it, it sucks, but that's kind of a reality of, you know, just like with, with anything else, you have to live within your means. You have to work within your means, right? So if you don't have the means to care for the animals properly, please stop taking in animals. So I was very upset by the whole situation because I know that the kittens were probably too sick to actually be saved. Uh, feline distemper has a very, very high mortality rate, like 90% of cats aren't gonna survive it, but they didn't need to suffer for as long as they suffered. They could have been humanely euthanized and be put out of their suffering. So I want to, and I talked to Chris about this because I didn't want, you know, I, I messaged him because I was just like, hey, you know, you really inspired me and I want to, you know, take a page out of your book and, and do this. I want to donate to not that animal rescue because I don't think they're running things as well as they should. And I'm just going to say it like, that's completely just my opinion. I don't work in animal rescue. I don't have experience. It just seems logical to me. I would be certainly open to having a discussion with anybody who has experience. You know, maybe there's things that I'm not seeing, but, um, so not that animal rescue organization, but I live close ish to an animal rescue organization that specializes in hospice for animals and also like major medical for animals. Like there's a lot of times, you know, there'll be a dog or a cat at a shelter or owners that have pets that come up against major medical that they can't afford and they're either gonna have to euthanize or abandon their animal. This organization takes those kind of cases and um, it's called Panda Paws. So I would like to start making donations to Panda Paws um, based on the comments that I receive because I'm a very, very, very tiny channel. <laughs> I thought that I would um, make it like a quarter a comment um, because I so here's my dilemma with it I want to leave myself room to grow but I also don't want to get overwhelmed financially um, I'm astounded at what Chris and his subscribers have managed to raise um, but I, I also know like my my own financial situation so I was thinking of starting at like a quarter a comment, but I probably, you know, that would probably only be like a couple dollars a month or something. So I just, I'll put a cap on my donation that I will, you know, donate a quarter for every comment made on the channel, on any video up to $25 a month. So that would allow a good amount of comments to come in that I feel like everybody's will still, you know, count towards a donation. And I'll probably be, you know, I'll probably make the donations monthly. And then I can just show you in the next video, like a screen grab of my, of my donation for the previous month. And I will, of course, I, I won't have it up right away, like right when I upload this video, but once I actually like make my first donation, um, I will, make sure that in every video there's a link to the organization um, and where you could donate directly if you want to um, that would be that would be great too so that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do going forward um, the, the kittens names were Sabrina and Buffy <laughs> it's been a little while sorry um, but yes I believe Sabrina and Buffy and they were just two sweet little, sweet little baby kittens. And my friend was so thrilled and it unfortunately didn't last a day before they got sick. And 
the thing that really killed me in it was that there was a cat from the same litter that had gotten sick before them. And the lady that was fostering them kind of played it off as no big deal. And so my friend didn't really know any better. Um, just kind of thought it was a fluke because the lady was super casual about it. And after watching, after my friend watching and sharing with me what the kitten she had in her custody went through, we know that it was not super casual or no big deal. And we know that there was 100% no way that the lady didn't know that this was a risk, you know? It should have been, the whole situation should have been handled really, really differently. So when I talk about it going forward, you know, I'm gonna mention it at the beginning of my videos that we're raising money in Sabrina and Buffy's memory and honor to be donated to Panda Paws Rescue Organization. So wanted to start with that. How was everybody's November? Like I said, mine flew, I'm gonna hydrate. Um, how was everybody's turkey day? I'm trying to get into the practice of not calling it Thanksgiving anymore because I don't, you know, believe in celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, but I do believe in, like, I, just the tradition of spending time with my family, um, reflecting on what we're grateful for. So I figure, you know, a, a better way to, I, I just, I want to call it Turkey Day <laughs> and not Thanksgiving because I don't, <clears throat> I don't celebrate, I don't celebrate what happened between the pilgrims and the Indians. Not, not my thing. Um, we had a good, we had a good day. We are always very, very low key about Turkey Day because, um, I typically host my family, which is very small. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not overly burdened, but I host my family for Christmas. And so to me to do things, to do Turkey Day and then four weeks later, turn around and do Christmas, that's too much work. I, my grandma did it for decades and I really commend <laughs> how much work and energy she put into it because it's basically the same thing. Like other than the fact that in November you don't really decorate your house, you clean it fully, you cook all the food, you have the people over, it's too much, too much work. So we don't entertain for Turkey Day and we do pretty much everything, like we do the traditional foods, but out of a box or a can, um, just very simple. We get a, like one of those turkey or turkey breasts that's just in a bag and you just throw it in the oven from frozen. That works. You know, canned cranberry, stovetop stuffing. Uh, the only thing that I do from scratch is mashed potatoes because I don't really make, I don't make mashed potatoes other than at a holiday. Uh, if we have them throughout the rest of the year, we do instant, but on a holiday, I will not stand for instant mashed potatoes because real mashed potatoes are just too good. So that's it. So, you know, it's very low key. Like I had to declutter my table and stuff because I do like to set the table. It just makes me feel like I'm doing something nice. But, so that was nice. We did it a day early because my husband worked on Thanksgiving and on Turkey Day, excuse me, still working on that. <laughs> um, so my husband worked on Turkey Day and we, that's not an important enough holiday for me to have him like request a day off or anything like that. So we just did it a day early on Wednesday. And then we started the decorating for Christmas mayhem. Or, I, I, I mean, I try to shy away from saying Christmas too, but I mean, just because like, I know not everybody celebrates Christmas. I don't celebrate Christmas in any kind of religious capacity. It's also still just about kind of family traditions and being together and whatnot. But, so please know if I, you know, 
say, by saying Christmas. I respect all holidays um, that happen between, you know, over the winter time. Um, so you can see some of my decor there. I'm not totally happy with this setup yet, but it's on the shelves. That's always the first step because, you know, I have stuff that normally lives there. So I have to swap everything. Everything has to come off the shelves. I dust them fully and then everything has to go on the shelves. Everything that was on there has to get packed away, just like this stuff was packed away. So I call it the great swap. That always takes three or four hours. <laughs> so that was stage one. Um, I'm not as far as I would like to be. Normally we'd probably be done by now, but we ordered a new tree because I have a different space for my tree this year. And the one that I had won't fit there. It's too, it's too wide because it's like in a corner and there's a door to like an under the stair closet door and the tree that I have would block it. And unfortunately I have like cleaning stuff, my vacuum, my brooms, mops, all that kind of stuff. So it's like a daily, <laughs> daily needed access. So bought a new tree. It should be here on Tuesday. So I'm hoping to have, excuse me, the tree fully set up by Wednesday night, which is my husband's last night off before he goes back to work for another week. And then I haven't set up my, my village yet because my aunt and I were talking and she is going to be giving me my grandma's Christmas village. I don't remember her having a village. My aunt says she thinks she didn't have it very long, maybe just like a few years before she passed. So I'm thinking that's why maybe I don't remember it. So without seeing it yet, I won't be getting it in my possession until later in the week or possibly early next week. Um, I don't know if it'll fit with the decor of what my village is. I was gonna just place it in a separate spot entirely, but without seeing it, I don't know if it'll fit in that spot. So I kind of feel like I need to leave my village space open. Like I don't wanna, I do not wanna set all that up and then be like, oh look, now I have to add pieces to it. No, that's, that's not gonna happen. So I'm waiting on the village. Um, I have some other decor. I've set out some other just like decor that's kind of like this stuff, it's just, trinkety, knick-knacky. Um, I have this really cool tree. So it was, a wood, it was a piece of wood that was cut to look like a tree, painted green, and then like little cute little ornaments painted on it. Um, and then they cut holes for lights. And so the lights actually like inset into the holes from the back. And it was just so pretty. But, so I bought it two years ago, and last year, by the, by the end of the season, because, you know, it's on for six weeks, like, continually, I had about 12, probably a dozen lights that were burnt out, and the thing about it is it's supposed to just be like, oh, just pull out the lights and put a new string in. It was 100 lights, so just buy 100, a string of 100 lights. Okay, cool. So we go to the store, we buy the lights, get them home. Mind you, I've already thrown away the old string last year. Way, way gone. Get the new lights, go to try to put them in. They don't fit. And I'm like, why do these not fit? They're freaking Christmas lights. Like this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be complicated. This shouldn't be hard. Well, apparently in the last couple of years, um, lights have been, they've been designing them differently. There's like this little itty bitty tiny clip on the side of where the bulb is so that it's easier to pull the bulb out and help push the bulb in. The holes that were drilled in this thing do not accommodate that little clip. So my husband went, we just thought maybe it was just this strand of lights, but my husband went to this back to the store, two stores, opened every box, and they all have it, even like the cheapest, cheapest lights, like $2 for a box of lights had it. And he was like, well, do you want me to keep looking? And I was like, if even the cheapest lights have it, there's no point. I was like, do you think you can make the holes bigger? 
And he was like, well, you know, I should just be able to drill like through the hole with a slightly bigger drill bit. I was like, okay, let's try that. The next size up drill bit that he had was too big. Like he went ahead and he did all the holes because I was like, well, I mean, it's ruined without being able to use light. So you can't technically ruin it anymore. So he drilled all the holes, the lights fit in, but the holes are too big. So the lights come all the way through and it's not really intended to come all the way through. It's kind of intended to just poke out just a little bit. Plus of course, like with it being wood, even though he drilled it from the back, like some gouges of wood came out um, on the front. So I was very upset. <laughs> and so I found something similar, not exactly like what I had and it makes me sad, but I do have something similar coming. So, but that whole area isn't set up either. And I'm just like, why is this so complicated? <laughs> we used to be able to decorate for the holidays in like two days. And now we're like going on a week and it's not gonna be done for a week and a half. I mean, it's not a lot of work, but it's just like everything is working against us. Um, so, but yeah, I have my, like I said, I'm gonna rearrange this stuff. There's stuff on that side too. Um, I'm gonna rearrange it a little bit. Let me see if I can go up top so you can see. I have stuff along the top. There's the other side. It, it's possible right now, but I just, I'm not as happy with it as I've been in the past. So hold please while I work on my extremely, extremely professional setup for <laughs> now I'm holding my tripod up. So I need to work on that a little bit. I have some Christmas lights on my sliding glass door. We have these really cool ornaments I'll put in a picture of what they look like. I have this half wall that divides my dining room from my living room. And I put command ho hooks up on the like molding part of the half wall. Cause it's not as tall as the ceiling. It's down a little bit from the ceiling. And I hang big like jumbo ornaments from it. So I'll put in a picture of what that looks like for you here. So those are up, but I, like I said, we still need to do the tree because it's not here yet. The lighted area with the tree and I have a lantern that I'm waiting for the new one to come. Village, I'm waiting to get my aunt's, my grandma's pieces from my aunt. So my house feels very chaotic right now. <laughs> um, but with all that said, let's get to stitching and I have FFOs, I'm so excited. I never have FFOs. Um, I, in my last video, I showed the pieces that I'm gonna be sending to my friend and various people in her household. Um, and I finished them, yay! Um, including Stitch, which that was, that was a whole, a whole thing, but okay. So I decided that for two of them, I just wanted them in hoops. Here is the one for my friend's granddaughter, Esmeralda. This is a frosted pumpkin stitchery pattern called Up, Up, and Away. I made some modifications. I backstitched my clouds because they weren't showing up very well on this fabric, which is, by the way, 14 count picture this plus crystal aerial. Um, I don't know if the sparkle is coming through or not. Eh, probably not. But yeah, so the clouds, the white just wasn't really showing up very well. So I backstitched the clouds. I should have backstitched the little white um, basket things too. I left, there was a face on the sun, but I decided to leave it off. And then there was a border around this whole thing. It was kind of like a little scallopy border but because I knew the name was gonna be so wide, I decided I didn't want to do, make the border bigger, if that makes sense. So I just decided to do no border and do her name. So that is fully finished. And I, I really love these hoops. Like, I think 
my issue with hoops, like hoop finishing, is I don't think that embroidery hoops are that attractive looking. Um, but these are much more attractive looking. And I, I cause, and especially because I like that they have the little built-in thing. Word of warning, if you go to Michael's and you see these, but it has like a label around it and you think, oh, the label is hiding that. It's not hiding that. <laughs> I tried to buy them at Michael's first and there's no hook on the Michael's ones. But the only thing about these is it's not as, you know, taut as I would like it. And I know a traditional hoop, you could get it tighter, but I figure it's okay because it's just going to be on the wall. So, but there is the Frosted Pumpkin. And that is going to, she's two years old right now, almost two and a half. This is, has some fuzzies on it. There we go. This is Darling and Whimsy Designs, Quirky Quaker. It is part of the Mythical Creatures three pack. There is a unicorn, a Loch Ness monster, and a sasquatch slash yeti depending upon what color you choose to stitch them in and this is for my friend's friend um who is in love with unicorns and normally i don't really care about finishing the back you know i, I just cut like with this one i just cut it as close as i could because it's just going to be up against the back right or up against the wall but as i was shopping for like the hoops and stuff to finish I happened to walk past this fabric and I was like, well, that's pretty perfect. I couldn't get that fold line was too stubborn to get out. But again, it's going up against a wall. But yeah, it's just cute unicorns, rainbows. So I went ahead and I just glued, glued that on. And that was stitched on 16 count. It's a Fortnite fabric that came in a Black Needle Society box. And then stitch. So if you watched my whole video last time, or well, actually, you know, I talked about that at the beginning because I showed it off with finishes. Um, I didn't really know what to do with stitch because of having stitching next to stitch. Sorry, y'all, I'm thirsty today. <clears throat> so I this was a stitch along by Abby Sue Designs. She did a Dogs of Disney stitch along. I was so down to do it and I got stitch done, went to start Lady, and after I got Lady probably 90% done, realized I put her in the wrong spot and it was so drastic. I either needed to fix it or heavily modify the pattern. And I, I think that was the pattern that finally got it through my head that I don't really like to do backstitch. I don't, I don't really enjoy patterns where the backstitch is a heavy factor for the design coming to life. I don't mind backstitching a mouth or eyes or whiskers or, or words. I don't mind backstitching words, but I don't know what it is. I know a lot of people have that kind of mental block about backstitching too. I'm not entirely sure where it comes from, but um, by this point, by the time I messed up, I realized the backstitch was going to be heavy. And I decided that between not really wanting to fix my mistake, not really wanting to modify the pattern heavily to make the placement work, I just decided to UFO the project. Um, because I mean, besides the material, it was a free stitch along when I signed up for it. You can still get it on her Etsy uh, as a paid stitch along. Um, so I was really just out material. Mostly was mostly that was DMC, which I just added to my stash. So I figured mostly I was just out the fabric, which was from Fabric Flare, because uh, they have like cool little printed designs, and I'd gotten a paw print uh, printed. Uh, fabric from Fabric Flare. So I was just like, I'm going to UFO this. I don't think I'm going to fix this. I don't want to modify this. And there's so much backstitch. 
but I wanted to save Stitch because I was completely done with Stitch. He's super cute and my best friend just happens to love Stitch. Like she loves Disney period, but Stitch is one of her favorites. So this is not perfect, <laughs> um, but it's for my best friend. It doesn't need to be perfect. She's gonna love it anyways. So I made a wall hanging. Now I had, I already had this planned when Christy from Christy's Crafty Corner, it's going to be on the screen. I can't remember if it's Christy's Corner or Christy's Crafting Corner, um, but if I'm going to bring her up again later when I talk about my haul. So like seriously, go check her out if you're not watching her because she is fabulous. She actually messaged me and told me I could turn Stitch into a brooch. Um, and she sent me a really fabulous video that I'm gonna link in the in the description box below about how to do it. And I was like, that's really cool. Really, really cool. But honestly, <laughs> if I'm being 100% honest, I was a little kind of chickeny to try it. I also bought my friend a brooch um, for Christmas. So I felt like perhaps doing Stitch as a brooch was a little, like I had already just happened to buy her <laughs> a brooch at the holiday market that I went to. And I had already ordered some fabric trim, but yeah, it was really easy. You just, you cut like two squares around the whole thing and you trace it onto like a little thin, like cardstock type paper or whatever, but just like thin, like cereal box thin cardboard or paper stock. And then you use felt for, and, and you have a pen and it was just so, and then you like whip stitch to hold the felt and the, and the stitching together. It was super easy and cute. But again, I just decided, I was like, this is what I know. This is what I'm comfortable with. I already got our brooch. Um, my only thing was, I didn't realize I was like out of sticky board. I had like a scrap of sticky board left and it was this wide. So I'm like, well, this is what I'm working with then. <laughs> Normally I would have maybe gone just like a, t a bit shorter and then, you know, tried to go a little bit wider, but this is what I had. And I was like, if I don't FFO this thing now, it's not going to happen. But then I wanted to get the Rick Rack or sorry, this is pom pom to, you know, cause it was going to be exposed edge. I wasn't going to be able to wrap this around anything. So again, and I was going for a bit more of an oval shape. This turned into a little bit of a V, but again, it's, it's not perfect. And because it's my best friend, she will not judge me. <laughs> and then I just used a little bit of pom-pom to make the hang. So stitch, he's done, he's saved. <laughs> He's, he's really cute and I'm pretty proud of him. He was my first time doing three quarter, like any kind of fractional stitches. And also my first French knots, which aren't terrible. Um, I tried to do French knots the way I've seen them done in most videos and I couldn't get them done. So there's another video that I will link below, but it's by Son of a Stitch. And he does his French knots a little bit differently than the way that I see like every other tutorial done. And that helped me, I was able to do it that way. So I'll link that below in the description box. Whips, so those were my fully finishes. I don't have any finishes, which I should have had a finish, but I don't have a finish. Um, this will be short because I worked on one project this month and that's it. <laughs> I worked on my um, Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Christmas Wreath Stitch Along. I started the Stitch Along on November 20th of 2020. I had hoped to have it done by its birthday. Blew that, um, blew that deadline. <laughs> and then I had hoped to have it done by the end of November. That's not going to happen either. But I did do about 2,300 stitches, which isn't horrible. I kind of feel like 
I like to set myself a goal of between like 3,000 and 5,000 stitches in a month. And I feel like because I didn't stitch for like the whole first 10 days of the month and I haven't stitched the last few nights because of decorating and stuff like that, 2,300 is not too shabby for how little time that I ended up having this month. But so here it is now. When you last saw this, I was, I thought about taking this off the Q-snap, but I hate putting it back on. So I should be able to find a picture, which if I can, I'll put it in. But basically like this is the bottom of a candy cane right here. And so I had the candy cane in, but I didn't have any of this greenery. And I only had a very tiny bit of this purple ornament stitched. So I stitched the rest of the purple ornament and the deer inside, all the greenery around these, around these. Then I stitched the star, um, snowman, snowflake, snowflake, ornament, most of a gingerbread person, most of an ornament. Let me tell you something though, the snowman hated me. The snowman and me, no, mm -mm, we're not friends. I miscounted when I started him. Well, what I did was, actually I didn't miscount. What I did was I stitched the hat in, but I forgot to mark the last stitch of my hat on the pattern. So when I was stitching this side of the snowman, I was like, oh, the white comes all the way over to the end, but it, it didn't because so I had to like take out probably close to like a hundred stitches. Then I miscounted um, I miscounted something else. When I was putting the silver in, I thought I had miscounted, but thankfully I fixed that. And then I miscounted one of the arms. It was just, oh, and, <laughs> and I miscounted the start of this ornament here. So this ornament should actually be one stitch further down, which is why it runs into the red Christmas lights. You can see how it touches the gold part of the Christmas light. But I realized it after I had already stitched the orange and the pink. I didn't put the blue in yet, but that was enough stitches that I was like, I'm not ripping it out. So what I'm gonna have to do to fix it, that's the only thing in the wrong spot. But I don't want everything to be like up by a square in that area, if that makes sense. So right here where it's negative space and the ornament looks incomplete, there's a candle here. The candle comes down. So I'm just gonna make the candle one stitch longer. So that'll put the candle in the right spot at the bottom. Everything else is right. And I'll just have to fudge the greenery around the actual ornament. Like up here, I'll have to put a little less green, like one. So my plan, and I normally do this anyways, I stitch the dark green. The dark green sort of outlines around things. So I'll get the dark green in first and try to get those stitches as accurate as possible. And then the predominant green is like a medium shade. It's that right there. That's where most of the modification will come from because I can just take out stitches of that and it'll be fine. And then I stitch the very lightest green, which is like leaves. They're like pine needles. So, but all I have left in this part is I have to finish this ornament, which it the empty space is this red color and then the bottom is this yellow color again. And then my gingerbread needs to be finished, his clothes need to be finished, and his face. And then uh, the candle, top part of the candle, and then greenery. And for some reason, the green goes really fast when I stitch it, I don't know why, but the green goes really fast. So then when I come down, you can see I'm at the bow. So I don't have that much left under here. Um, and there's really just like a couple of peppermints, 
a couple of lights. One more ornament, I think. It's not too bad. It's, there's not that much left. <laughs> it's about 2,900 stitches left. So end of the year, please. I don't, I, there's so much I want to work on, but I don't want to work on anything until that's done. Cause that's why it's not done yet is because I get distracted and then I don't go back to it for three weeks or whatever. So I'm kind of trying to be tough with myself, but I want it done, done. But I've been watching people stitch on Hades. I want to stitch on my Haid. I really want to stitch on my Foxglove Nora Corbett design. I want to stitch on my other Christmas projects, which is only two, thankfully. I, there's a project I want to start, and I went ahead and kitted it up because I think I might be able to catch up to it. But I'm like, no, the wreath needs to get finished. So that was my whip. And now, haul. Now, I don't have all my like fabric and floss in because it's not technically the end of the month. Usually that stuff is showing up right at the 30th, the 31st. But I have some cute stuff to show you. This, this is not really haul, but I had to show it because it's so cute. So we get, for my dogs, we get BarkBox. And my husband, is he likes opening it and giving them the toys. So I didn't pay attention when this got pulled out and they started playing with them. I didn't notice it until I went to pick up toys for the night. They got a freaking cross stitch pillow. Home is where the treats are. Look at that, it's so cute. And yeah, I know it's not really cross stitch, <laughs> but look, it's so cute. I was like, that's too cute for the dogs to destroy because that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna rip that lace trim off. They're gonna put holes in it and try to pull the stuffing out and then I'm gonna have to throw it away. So I nabbed it. I'm gonna put it on my desk or something. I just thought it was too cute. Um, next, I want to talk about, this is not cross-stitch haul, but you remember how earlier I mentioned Christy um, and her floss tube channel. So she has got a, she has launched a little business for herself and is making things out of vintage spools mostly and other vintage material. And when she started showing this stuff on her channel and on her Instagram, I was just dying. I was like, please, I have to have this stuff. So she made a bunch of stuff for a craft fair that she did in her town. And then what didn't, and I had commented on one of the ornaments and I was like, can you make me some of those? And she was like, well, let's, she was like, yeah, I totally can, but let's see. She's like, I'm, you know, making stuff for the fair right now. Let's see what I have left after the fair. And then we can, we can talk about it. And I'm going to list all that stuff on Etsy. So it's like, sweet. So <laughs> she did a video talking about how the fair went for her. And, um, she was like, I'll be listing this stuff on Etsy tomorrow. And I was like, girl, what time? Cause I'm going to get online. I mean, I didn't say anything to her. But that was my plan. I was like, I'm gonna check Etsy when I get up and then I'm gonna be checking it like hourly until she uploads them, right? But she was so sweet and she remembered that I had interest in her ornaments and so she messaged me and was like, this is what I have left. I'm gonna be listing on, it's, on Etsy, but I'll let you have first dibs. And I was like, yes. And I had just watched the video where she showed everything. She didn't post everything to social media, but she posed, she showed everything in the video. So I was like, I want this and I want this and I want this. Okay, so the first thing that I was really drawn to that she had posted was this guy, this little one, sorry, non-gender, gender specific language. Okay, here we go. Woo, yep, she's gonna, it's gonna swirl. You can see how sparkly that is though? Like, look at that. So this is a vintage spool and some vintage lace or trim, vintage trim, and then a shell here at the bottom, and then the little hook to hang out on the tree. I seriously wish I could afford, I have a little tiny tree that I'm gonna be putting up, and I wish I could afford to, to decorate, 
to decorate the whole thing in these because <laughs> they're so pretty and sparkly. So I got this one for me. And then I got, she mostly did those with sewing type charms, like sewing related charms. Gotta find it. Ice machine, sorry. There it is. So I have a friend who's actually making me a project, but well, she made it for me. I'm just waiting for it to come in the mail. Um, but she's a big sewer. And so I bought this one to send to her as a thank you for making me the project bag. I mean, I paid her, but um, she, we're gonna have a standing, <laughs> a standing relationship that if I want a project bag made, I can just send her the, the stuff and she'll make it for me when she has time. So I bought this for her. Then I bought two of these, one for me and one I'm gonna gift. And these are spool trees. How cute are they? They're so cute. She put little bells on them, used like buttons or be beads to like bind them together. Love it. One is going on my tree, one I'm gonna gift. I have these, these, um, my husband has these friends that he used to game with and, um, they haven't gamed in a long time, but every year is a little different as far as how we treat Christmas, I guess. Like some years we kind of gone all out for each other and hosted each other and stuff. And then other years we just don't like do anything. So I always like to have like a little something to be prepared <laughs> um, for them. So this next thing is for, so that extra tree will go to one of them. Now this one is for the other part of that gaming group. And this is a bookmark, I'll show you. But it's using some like lace trim, a little shell at the bottom. And then here's the end of it. So it unrolls and you use it as a bookmark. And I really, I really loved the lace. And then you just wrap it back up and you use the chain to grab the ornament at the bottom or the little dangly at the bottom. Like so. And then you put the little bead through. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but trust me. Of course it slips, of course it slips. There we go. And then you can kind of tighten it closed. So yeah, that's gonna go to the other friend of his cause she is an avid reader. And the next two things were from me. I, she showed this on her social media and I, I'm obsessed with pine cones. I'm really into pine cones. And so she took, this was printed fabric and she embroidered the berries and then attached the beads. And then there's a little bit of gold in the leaves. So that's gonna go on my tree. And then the last thing, haven't decided where I'm putting this yet. I know where I want to put it. I'm just not entirely sure I want to get up on the stepladder and do it. But this beautiful spool wreath. I love it so much. Oh my god. I don't... Why? Christy, why do we love these things? <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. But I have some spool ornaments already, actually. They're not, like, vintage handmade. They're a little commercial-ish. Um, but they have like faces carved into them. And so I was just like, this is perfect. I love this so much. I want to put it above my TV. I just don't know if I want to actually get up there and hang the stuff. And then I just have, I want to just show you her card. So this is the business, the spoolery. And then here's her information as far as where you can find her 
Uh, she has some of these things listed on Etsy, so please go check out her Etsy shop. Um, I just, I love it. I love all of it. The next thing I got, again, this is not stitchy related. I promise you, after this, the rest is stitchy related. Um, I am doing a card exchange this year. Um, I've done like ornament exchanges, but this is the first time I've actually done a holiday card exchange. And the one of the ladies who sent me a card sent me this beautiful little, little angel ornament. And it had just, it had a super sweet meaning that I won't really get into because it's a, it's a very specific community that's exchanging cards. Um, and it's a tiny bit personal, but it, this was just like a, we're all in it together kind of beautiful sentiment. So that's going to go on my tree too. So that's another reason I feel like my house is a mess. I have some ornaments and stuff like this that's just like sitting because I still need my tree. Okay. <clears throat> haul. My haul bucket got messed up from my husband trying to drill stuff near my things. Bad husband. I bought my first Bothy Threads kit. I watched somebody, uh, Laura from Anxiety Art Adventure, show a Bothy Thread kit, and I had had my eye on this for a while. Um, I certainly didn't need it because am I going to start it anytime soon? No. Um, but it's really cool because it comes with the printed fabric and the floss and there's little shell embellishments that it comes with. And one thing I had always kind of wondered was how you, like, how you center or how you start because with it being printed fabric, I was like, how do you make sure your design is going to line up right with, you know, needing to keep margins and stuff? But when she unboxed hers or, you know, showed it, I was like, oh, the, um, the margin is white. So you just start in the corner. So I will probably start, um, I'll probably start in that corner so that I don't have to count anything. So if I started up here, I'd have to count, well, starting the dolphin wouldn't be bad, I guess. The only thing I'm unsure about is the metallic thread and also how the thread comes. I don't care for it being tied up like that. Um, but I just, I love that. I love the mer I love the turtle, especially. So yeah, got a body, body threads kit. I got last... Okay, I don't know if it's November or October's Floss of the Month from Forbidden Fiber Co. Because she bills, so she billed me in October, but I receive it in November. So I don't know if I'm like paying ahead or, I don't know. But anyway, it came in November. So we have, we gotta do it properly, right? Little Brown Bat. Um, trying to figure out where I put things. Cinnamon. Azure. Very pretty blue. Bounty Hunter. Pretty sure that's from like a box or something from a kit. She makes colorways for the pattern she releases and then eventually she'll put them into the, into the Floss of the Month clips. Plum Dandy. Daylily. Galaxy. Quarantine. <laughs> um, I, again, I think that might be from like a box or something. Cobra Kai, that's from the Cobra Kai box. Very variegated. Child, this is from the Star Wars box. It's the, the Grogu green. Mink. And 
and Autumn Sunset. It's got some deep brown variegation in there. So that was Forbidden Fiber Co. Floss. Um, next, so I had a little mishap with um, Fiberlicious. I had emailed to discontinue my floss of the month, but there was a bit of a, I worded it strangely. <laughs> she copy and pasted it to me and I did. I worded it. I, I could see how she read it the way she did, but I was intending to drop the floss and keep the fabric but it was misunderstood that I wanted to drop to just the floss. So I ended up getting the floss pack in the mail and I was like, but I dropped the floss. And so we, we talked about it, She fig we figured it out. Um, but then I was like, but what about my fabric? And she was like, oh yeah, yeah, I can get you back set up with the fabric. Um, and she was like, do you want this month's or next month's? And I was like, well, if this month is still an option, then please, by all means, send me the invoice for it. <laughs> so I did get the floss pack, even though I won't be getting it going forward. But this is Apple Orchard. Granny Smith. Golden Delicious. If you couldn't tell, we had an apple theme this month. I like I, I like that golden delicious color. That's really pretty. Loose, Lucy Rose. Wow, this, I don't know if this will show, but this has got like a little bit of orangey pink and like purpley pink and there's like a lot of color variation going on in that one, but subtle. And this is Apple Harvest. And then um, after I paid the invoice for the fabric, she went ahead and sent that along. Um, this was the card, by the way, for the inspiration for the floss. So she went ahead and sent the fabric along, and this is called Autumnal Orchard. I get 32 count Lagana, and here it is. I have not, I try to wait to open them up until I'm on camera. It reminds me a little bit of the Rustic Fall, just with added colors. Oh, so you can see there's like yellows and greens and peaches and pinks in there. So yeah, that's, that's really pretty. So that was Fiberlicious. I haven't gotten um, Fortnite or Bestitch, Bestitch Me yet. Um, they will be coming shortly. They're, I think they've both shipped. Um, and I haven't gotten my color and cotton floss either. Okay. Put the label back on. Less of a mess for myself to clean up after this is filmed. <laughs> so this last bit of haul is from Move my bucket. This last bit of haul is from Live and Die LA. And I have been a member of the group for a while and I finally got an order put in. So they do like a Friday night fight night um, like some other groups do. And what I like about their group is that it's pretty low key. They usually have enough things posted that, cause I never remember Friday night fight nights. So I always remember like six hours later when I get on Facebook and I see a post from it, I'm like, oh shoot. So I don't really participate in many of them, but this one, usually there's pieces that are unclaimed. So I go through and I'm like, mm -hmm. and I like that because then I don't feel that like pressure of like, oh my God, I have to put my name on here right now. So they did a rainbow colored one, which is what got me to, to buy. I was like, need that in my life. So this is called Bifrost and I think they are going to make this a regular part of their website but not until next year. Look at it. It's so pretty. 
I want to stitch a like in this house we believe um, with it and do like you know Black Lives Matter, science is real, the, those type we believe statements and I've wanted a rainbow type fabric for for that so this is gorgeous love it and the, so this was the 16 count Ada it's soft like picture this plus and like the stitch me I was pleasantly surprised at that that it's so soft in that same order I went ahead and claimed a piece of Lugana 32 count Lugana just because I thought it was a nice neutral and I decided that since I was getting an Ada I would get a an even weave too just to try out the quality love it it's called a crew brute um and then i then so they hadn't gotten that shipped out yet normally i have bought floss from them before before i started filming floss tube i just hadn't bought fabric and normally they do ship out very quickly she got a little behind so she hadn't shipped those yet when they took custom orders for this fabric and so because I ordered a custom piece, then I had to wait like while well, they dyed this. But look at it. Oh my gosh. It is Maleficent in 16 count Ada. It's so pretty. I have no idea what I'm gonna stitch on it. No idea whatsoever. But I just, I was like, that's gorgeous. I could not pass that up as well as even though again I'm not really into variegated floss but they made a matching floss so I went ahead and I got that too <laughs> because why not right so yeah that is my haul <sighs> plans right now are finish the reef and then I'll think about it <laughs> Then I'll think about what I want to do after that. Um, we'll see. I mean, I should be able to get it done. Hopefully within the first two weeks of the month. If I ind indeed do Flossmas, I will be showing my progress daily. So hopefully it's a finish during December. And then hopefully I can work on some other stuff. Um, I'm considering in 2022 sort of picking like a focus piece to work on for as long as I can tolerate working on it and then switching to another one. I'm thinking about doing Whipco, but I'm not entirely sure about that either. I just know that I want to make good progress on the things that I already have started. I'm not really in a starting mood other than wanting to start the one thing that I kitted up and I probably will start that. Um, but other than that, I'm not really in a starting mood. I'm wanting a get stuff finished mood. So that's it for me. Um, I will get this uploaded today, so Monday the 30th. And I hope I I hope to see you for Flossmas. Like I said, I just haven't totally decided. I might like film opening and then like compile it weekly. It might be more realistic for me, but those would be pretty long videos. So we'll see, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here for now. Thank you so much for watching, being here, subscribing. Please remember comments that you leave below. We'll be making donations to Panda Paws Animal Rescue in honor of Buffy and Sabrina. And until next one, until the next time, take care, stay safe, and see you soon. Bye.